Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We begin today with the wheat crop and some tools to help out producers with their input costs. Here's SUNUP's Austin Moore. What I hear across the state is you're, you're up in Ottawa County. That's the county that gets all the rain. Yeah, we are blessed with a little bit more rain probably than everybody else, but we're still pretty serious condition. In Ottawa County, Extension Ag and 4-H educator Jeff Parmley gave me a rundown on their drought situation. We ended up the year uh, short of moisture just like everyone else. We're actually behind a little bit right now, but the rains we have has uh, been very timely and kind of hit right when everything needed it. Parmley joined me on a visit to Brent Rendell's farm just outside Miami, Oklahoma. We, we were in this same condition last year mm -hmm. and I had what I would consider a complete failure on corn and uh, about a half failure on my soybeans. Really? So we can go from, from great conditions to, to really bad in, in a hurry. The nice thing is we're entering winter, right. going to enter in spring at, at a pretty decent shape. And taking advantage of that condition is why we are here. I wanted to look at what Rendell is using to make the most of his wheat stand. You've got a couple of enrich strips you want to show us today. This is the first one, and, I, and I'm sorry, other than this flag right here, I, I don't see it. And, and that is exactly right. This flag marks a starting point going for about 300 feet, okay. that direction, 10 feet wide, where I applied 150 pounds of nitrogen shortly after planting. Okay. The rest of this field only got what I put down at planting, which was 25 pounds of nitrogen. Okay. You'd say, well, if you put down 150 pounds of nitrogen more than the rest of the field, where is it? And the answer is, it doesn't need it. Right. Plant's not um, using it. The, the, the plant's not using it. This wheat was planted on a failed corn crop. Last year's corn got plenty of nitrogen and then didn't use it. So as, uh, as the stalks break down and everything starts mineralizing, you start recapturing some nitrogen. The question is, how much? Right. And the only way to know that is by putting out a nitrogen ripped strip. Now you can use a green seeker and, and optically sense the difference, or you can use your own eye and look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, now me looking at this, I don't see any difference. The, the truth though is, we can see what the green seeker says and it'll right. tell us what the difference is between here and right over there. And so we took a walk, holding the sensor nice and level. One reading walking the length of the enriched strip and a second walking the same distance on an untreated portion of the field. As we kind of expect here, the numbers look pretty consistent. The numbers are very consistent. There's right. a little bit lower number here, but, but certainly nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Let off the trigger and it gives me an average of 0.79. So I've got 0.81 there and I've got a 0.79 here. Uh, there's actually a computer program then that I can go in on the, uh, the nitrogen utilization efficiency website and I can plug those two numbers in along with the planting date for this variety and it will tell me whether or not I need to add any nitrogen and how much I should add. Very good. Let's go over and take a look at this other field, the one that you say that is a very clear enriched strip. Exactly. Mile and a half straight east to here. We'll go to another field and you're going to see it something completely different. All right, so here we really can see a very dramatic difference. You know, as we step off the enriched strip, it's a lot thinner, a lot fuller, lusher uh, wheat here. That's right. And, and you know, in, in a good growing season like this that we've had to date, uh, it's a little harder to tell. But I mean, if, if you look at it, especially from a distance, you can really see the difference here. And I tell you what, when you go to the Green Seeker, it's even more obvious. Uh, the last field that we were at, the difference between my heavy nitrogen area and the rest of the field was only a difference of, of 0.02. Right. Here, the difference between one and the other one is 0.12. Now, those numbers really don't mean a whole lot once you, until you start getting into the nitrogen system, but basically it means in the last field we were in, which is the exact same variety, under the exact same rotation, with the exact same fertility program, no top dress nitrogen was required. Here, one and a half miles difference, one day planting difference, this field needs 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So what does that mean to you in terms of savings in your operation? Well, in the last field, I'm going to save $3,000 versus what I would normally do. In this field, I'm still going to apply some nitrogen, but I'm not going to apply anywhere, anywhere near the thumb rule rate of two pounds per acre per bushel of yield goal. Normally on a field like this, I'd be top dressing it at about 75 pounds of nitrogen per acre. 
And as I said, this one's going to end up with about 50. So you're saving money even here where you're going to put it out. Even here where I'm going to put it out. I, I've, I've looked at the data over the last, uh, basically I've been doing the Green Seeker program for almost 10 years now. My average savings is between 12 and $18 per acre uh, on wheat. Nitrogen fertilizer rivals land cost on, on total inputs in most farming systems. The only other one that may come in is diesel cost. So, so nitrogen and fertilizer inputs are one of the highest inputs that, that an average producer deals with. Brian Arnall is an extension soil nutrient specialist with Oklahoma State University. He explains that even in this dry year, the nitrogen situation across our state remains field by field. First we look at how much pre-plant was put down with the seed. If there wasn't any pre-plant nitrogen put down, I'm still giving a recommendation, let's put down some nitrogen just to make sure that crop has something unless we're, we're near already a loss. So if there's still potential in it, get some down. But because of the lack of rain, because of the lack of tillering in many locations, we're reducing that nitrogen rate. What we're trying to avoid is this this over fertilization when we know the likelihood of getting to maximum yield is, is just not there this year. So reducing the inputs this year uh, to, to save on that a little bit, but still make sure that there's something there for these rains that we do get, just to make sure that we aren't losing the potential yield. And Arnall has advice on how to fertilize as well. Getting in front of rain is important if we're using uh, urea. If we're going with liquid, streamer nozzles are always preferred to get better soil to fertilizer contact. But you, it is possible to go with a flat fan if you're mixing in a herbicide. All important advice, because this year, controlling cost may be the key to profit. For SUNUP, I'm Austin Moore.